misery. are three lads from Sunderland who have to be seen to be believed. They're called the Toy Dolls, and we caught up with them on back shift at a sweaty little gig not a million miles away from Horden Colliery. The band have quite a following in the area. They're a northern band, you know, or they, you get the same sort of thing over, over the border in Scotland, where bands have to earn a living, not just being terribly hip and being uh, aloof and elusive, you know, and, and difficult. Um, they have to actually go out and earn a living. These are the Toy Dolls. Angry, nasty, and absolutely mad, their lyrics revolve around the everyday observations of working-class English life, with a particular focus on the attitudes of their neighbours. And that was fun. Their journey began in small pubs and in the oi scene, opening for UK punk bands like Angelic Upstarts. So the bloke there, your man, is a, is a really good entertainer. Almost like a musical tradition, you know, going back like a hundred years or so. I mean, he's a really good entertainer. This is Olga, whose real name is Michael Algar. He founded the band at just 18 years old and continues to lead it to this day. In 1982, with their rendition of the song Nelly the Elephant, reaching the UK tops and staying there for several months. Forty years later, we can confidently declare it's still an absolute banger, as you punks like to say. In their music, you'll find catchy alliterations in song titles like Peter Practice's Practice Place and Quick to Quit the Quentin. And they became the masters at iconic covers, from blue suede shoes to the final countdown, always speed up with a punk twist. Money, show. This is the Toy Dolls, masters of musical mischief. Go, don't you slip off these big shoes. Bet you in a off my big big shoes. No! Throughout their journey, they've seen a revolving door of 14 drummers and 12 bass players, especially in the financially challenging 80s. Throughout the 90s, toy dolls faced challenging times. Olga was the sole driving force behind the band's survival. They struggled to found a larger fan base, to gain recognition in the UK, and found limited success in the US, even though their shows drew full houses. Like 
In fact, from the late 90s to the mid 2000s, Olga contemplated quitting and took a detour to play bass with the Dickies and the Addicts for a few years. They said on the news, I've never seen you in a wearing on the He's only getting the papers that he had the shiny look. But I would look just the same if I had my head on. Then they released an album titled Outlast Album in 2005. And since they've enjoyed a thriving cult following spanning European countries from Portugal to Poland, as well as transcontinental from Japan to Brazil. Lineup till this day is composed of Olga, Tommy on the bass guitar, and Mr. Duncan on the drums. After more than two decades of struggle, and thanks to Olga's perseverance, they extrapolated the barriers of punk and we can see all types of people in their audiences, even some that still surprise the band elements till this day. If they go on to become famous and, and wealthy and so on, actually that, that can be very destructive, you know. 